The Breckenridge Design Project has a second floor and the video series on this section is going to cover building that floor, defining the ceiling and floor structures, placing the stairs between floor one and floor two, placing the windows, and then finally changing the flooring materials. Let's go back into the program and get started on the second floor. To build the second story in Chief Architect, in the menu I'm going to select Build New Floor. The easiest way to build that floor is to let the program derive the second floor from the main floor. Select OK and then you're going to get a dialog that asks you about the parameters of that floor. On our first floor, this is an 8 foot ceiling, 97 and an eighth. On our first floor we have that at 109 and an eighth and typically that's a 8 foot ceiling. Again, that isn't exactly 8 foot because it takes into account your ceiling finish and your floor finish in that calculation. So I've changed that to 109 and an eighth. The other thing is in my floor structure between floor one and the crawl space my default is actually to use a three-quarter inch subfloor and then I've got a 21 inch truss that I'm going to be putting in there when we get to the framing. So when you build your floors it's important to know your platform thickness if you care about doing your elevations and having that accurate if you're going to be doing stairs between the platforms and that sort of a detail. So my floor thickness is 21 and 3 quarters. I've set my ceiling to 109 and an eighth and I'm going to let the program build that second floor for us. Now when the floor builds, let's go ahead and take our 3D overview. It's going to have the exact footprint from the floor below as we've selected it. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to select a couple of the rooms and make them open to below. And before I do that I need to draw a few walls. So let's go ahead and use our wall tool and in this case I'm going to use the interior railing tool and I'm just going to draw a railing between the two walls here. Once I've got room definition you'll see that by being able to highlight that and get a shading area, pressing Control E on the keyboard, I'm going to simply make that an open to below room. And what that does is that actually removes the platform out of the area and you can actually see below. I'm going to switch over to the plan view and rough out the interior walls. I'll do that fairly quickly since we covered placing those walls in creating the floor plan on floor one. Using my interior wall tool, I am going to change that. I'm going to use a four inch insulated wall. Again, I've changed that wall type here to be able to have a different fill than my regular four inch wall. These walls are going to be insulated because they're on the second floor. I have a lot of bedrooms up here. And it's a little bit more act to draw these, these walls in the floor plan view versus a 3D view. So again, I'm just going to come in here and shape out a few of the walls for the floor plan. So we can create our bedrooms. And again, I'm just kind of creating a, a few of these walls in here. Pull that back a little bit. Put a bedroom in this area. Put a couple of bathrooms and bedroom in that area. Another wall here. And another wall here. Back into the 3D view you can see the way that that's beginning to shape and I'm going to go ahead and finish placing the rest of the walls in between here for the bathrooms. Now that I've placed those walls they can be exactly positioned again using the automatic exterior dimension tool. You can place those dimensions and then resize those walls to exact numbers. Also you'll notice if I zoom in here some of my dimensions are at a sixteenth of an inch. You can control that through your defaults or you can click on an individual dimension, open it up, and under your primary formatting you can change that dimension to an eighth of an inch or you can round that up and use it exactly. Um, I also changed this wall in here. It's going to be a plumbing wall so I used a six inch wall instead of the four inch wall and I did that over here in the case where the toilet is going to back up against this wall as well. My next step is to place the stairs between the two platforms and I'm going to go down to floor one and draw the stairs from floor one up to floor two. I typically always draw the stairs up. You can draw them down but I think it's easier to manage it. Drawing the stairs up 
back in my floor plan view, first thing is I'm going to turn off my dimensions. Select a dimension, go to the object properties here, and remove that from being displayed. Just make it a little cleaner to see things. Down on the second floor, I've drawn a CAD line, and sometimes I'll do this and put it on a layer called CAD guidelines. If you open up the sample plan here, you'll see a few of those. And this is in some cases where maybe I've done some measurements or want something to be aligned in a specific way. I'll, I may use a line and draw out a line. From the first floor, I'm going to choose my stair tool here, and I'm just going to click on that line and I'm going to drag it up to the second floor. And then I'm going to then snap that. Let's open it up before we do that. And there's a few things that I want to do here. First of all, let's walk through this dialog. I'm going to make a number of changes here. And this is the type of stair that I'm after. Not necessarily the railing, but I want a nice thick tread and I want to run a stringer like that underneath of it. So in the dialog, I'm going to go down through here and I'm going to remove a few things. Um, no stringer at the bottom. No stringer at the wall. Just remove some of these items underneath. Open risers. On the tread overhang, I'm going to set that to zero. The tread thickness, I'm going to set that to be the same as my riser, which I want it to be six and seven eighths. Um, and I think that's it on that panel. Let's go to our general panel. And I'm going to set a couple of things in here. First of all, the length and the width. I'm going to set my length to 198, my width to 59. These stairs are going to be stacked over the top of a set of stairs that I'll draw going up from the garage floor. So they're going to be a little wider than they normally would because my foundation wall is going to be a thick concrete wall. I have all of the changes in here that I need and I'm going to go ahead and select OK and we'll take a look at our stairs. I'll toggle over to the 3D view and we'll take a look at how that looks in 3D view. Notice that I forgot my railing at the wall, so I'll just highlight the stairs. Go back into the railing option, which is found on the noodles and balusters, and I'm going to remove railing at the wall on the left. Notice that in my preview panel that updates as well. And I'll select OK, and in the 3D view you'll see that then remove. Notice on my stairs, it automatically created an opening up here between the railing on that second floor wall. As I return into the plan view and open the stair dialog panel one more time, there's a few new features that we introduced in X8. One is that it has a brake line, and you can control the way that brake line looks. So you can change the distance from the start, angle, gap, etc how it's going to display after the brake line. Notice that if I change it, my preview here is updating. If you want to see nothing or change it here, the same thing if you want to uh, display it. Of course, that's not going to show because it's on the other floor. So that's a new feature that we've allowed in X8 and newer. Another new feature you'll find um, in X8 and newer is under the newels and balusters. If you uncheck on plan display, use defaults, you can draw your balusters and your rails in your plan view, and then you can display the way that's going to look. Notice in the plan view, I can only see the handrail and not the balusters. If you want to see the balusters, let me open the stairs back up. There is an option for fill style on that handrail. Back under the newels and balusters, under the handrail, you can choose the fill style here and set that to be none. And then when you go back into the plan view, you can actually then see the balusters. Back over to the 3D view, let's take a look at some of the cosmetics. I'm going to use the material eyedropper, and I'm going to choose the color off of our window casing, and then I'm going to apply that onto both our handrail and our stringer. So let's go ahead and make a few of those changes. I'm also going to change the components for the stairs and make that a solid color as well. I'm also going to make some changes on this railing. So if I select it, notice I get the room, which is indicated in the lower left-hand corner. Press the Tab key, I get my railing. Control E on the keyboard. First thing I want to do is set that railing height to 42 inches. Come down, and on the rails, sorry, rail style, 
I'm going to change this to be a panel because I want to go into the library and make a change in here. That's actually under the Noodles and Balusters. Come in to the library setting for those panels. And I'm going to browse into the core catalog and it should be under fences and railings. Find the glass options. Choose this glass B divide. Select OK. And I'm also going to change the post to be 42 to match that railing style. And so far the preview looks reasonable. Let's select OK and update the railing. And then again use the material eyedropper. Select the color off of the stairs and I'm going to apply that both to the post and to the railing as well. Below the railing is a stub wall that's coming out and in this area to the right of that stub wall is going to be where the fireplace and the master bedroom are going to be. I'm going to place that here in just a minute. For the meantime let's zoom out and I want to use the material painter and change the flooring on this upper second floor. And what I'm going to do is browse in the library here and I'm going to search for a term on a material that I already know about and I'm going to type that in there, hit the search button and I'm going to select that material. In the components mode you can change the component, the object, the room, the entire floor, the entire plan. I'm going to choose the entire floor in this case and I'm just going to click in the area and paint the entire floor of that. So that's pretty way, pretty easy to paint the entire structure that way. Now in this area for the fireplace, um, I'm going to browse in the library and then I'm going to reshape my railing to go around it. And here's a rendering of the completed view. So I'm going to place that, that fireplace and I've I've actually built this using polyline solids and then saved it into my library and then notice uh, the railing above it. I've kind of shaped it to go out and around that fireplace just slightly. And then later when we talk about framing I have a structural post that goes up and is encased in that fireplace. Let me open up the library and place that fireplace. In the library what I do in creating plans is I'll create a project file for each plan that I create. So if there's any unique objects that are developed during that plan, I may save them into the library that I can reuse later and then recall that. So in my section here I've got the Breckenridge fireplace and I'm going to place that here in the middle of the room and just use a point to point move once the object is selected and I'm just going to click on the edge here and come back and place that approximately where I want it. And I think that's back a little bit too far. Let me just slide that forward. Now this fireplace back in the 3D view is actually a double sided fireplace and what it has set up in here is a privacy divider so you actually can't see through into that master bedroom. And again I've just created this using polyline solids and then a group selected it and saved it in the library. The next step is to have this railing come out and around the fireplace. Notice that you can still see my uh, top of my stub wall and I want that platform actually to come out and uh, go over the top of that. Returning back to the floor plan on the second floor, this railing that we created, when I did that I created it a four and a half inch thickness. I'm going to make that six and a half just to make it easy so that it's exact same thickness as the exterior wall. It makes it easy to line it up. And then I'm going to turn on a layer that I have called CAD guidelines. These are lines that I draw to help me determine where things are. There is a tool called reference layers that you can turn on and it will show you the floor below. I pressed F9 on the keyboard. There's also a shortcut key on the far right hand side of my menu called reference display floor display and it will show you the floor below. And that's helpful but it is a bit more cluttered than I'd like so I'm going to toggle that back off and these guidelines I just drew over the top of that to help me see a little cleaner. Selecting the wall for the railing, I'm going to use the break tool. Come in here on that CAD guideline right there, click break. And then I'm also going to come down and click a break right down in here. And then that wall segment I can pull out and snap onto that other line. And then I'll use the diamond at a 45 degree. And that cleans that up. And then we'll also on the diamond at a 45 degree come in here. In this case I'll just pull that wall back. And then in the 3D view, 
let's take a look at the way our floor platform is healed. So you can see now that's covering that lower wall that was exposed and maximizing the floor space in that hallway. The last step that I want to do in the plan is to place our windows and I went a little bit out of order um, doing the materials earlier. In the rendering you can see in the upper section I have windows on the second floor. There's actually two sets of windows. I'm going to place the lower set of windows first and I actually can't place these upper windows because I did that in the attic wall and that attic wall won't be generated until we build the roof. So let's focus on placing these lower windows. Selecting the window tool, click and place the window. Open that window up. This window is using defaults from my first floor and I'm going to make some changes in here, 42 inches and then I'm going to change the floor to bottom at 28 and 3 quarters and accept the rest of those parameters. Select OK. Then I'm going to select the set as default. Now future windows that I place will have that same property in here. Select that and then let's just run a quick dimension line down here. Pull that out here just a little bit. And I'm going to set that window to be, zoom in here, set that window to be a couple of inches away so just mouse over that, type in two inches, and then I'm going to group select both of these windows, and then highlight the dimension over here, and I'm going to enter in two foot, nine and a half, and set that dimension, try that again, <laughs> two foot, nine point five inches, and then with those two windows still selected, use the copy reflect around the room, and place those two windows over there. Let's go ahead and delete that dimension line. I'm going to use the automatic dimensions and we'll completely do our dimensioning here in just a minute. One more window off to this side over here and in this case for this window, let's go ahead and open that up. I want this to be a fixed window. Select OK and with that window still selected I'm going to use the copy button, pull a copy over here and just press tab key and I want that exactly 44 inches. That leaves us a two inch gap and then I'm going to use the shift key so that both of the windows are selected and mold those windows using the make mold unit and then that window is selected as a single unit and with it highlighted I'm going to use the copy and reflect around the room and place that window on the other side. To speed things along I'll go ahead and place the rest of the doors and windows. So I placed the remaining windows and actually doors as well in the plan. What isn't in here yet are the windows that will go in when the roof gets generated and the attic walls gets generated. In the floor plan view, if I click the automatic exterior dimensions and refresh those, again you may need to do some cleanup on these and uh, you can change those around. It looks like one of my windows moved a little bit but you can do the cleanup on your dimensions like we did in floor plan one simply by clicking on a dimension if you want to select those dimension lines and you can either move the dimension off or back onto an object by simply click and placing that into the area. That wraps up the second floor plan of the Breckenridge design. In the next segment of the video series we're going to look at the basement or the garage structure and that will be uh, the second or the third segment in the video series.